Yeah, I didn't send an email to remind people today. Well, you've been at eight o'clock for a couple of weeks now. Right, but you know, when I don't send an email, I always worry. You know, I have to, I need. But did you send one now? Send it now. What's the name? Fine. It's good. Take it, take it. Just here. I have an idea. Oh, okay. Somebody knows. Hi there. Hi. I'm in a car on the way back from the airport, so I think I'll go off camera here so I don't look scary. Who is this? Yaakov. Hi. Oh, hi, Yaakov. How are you? How are you? Okay, sentence. Good. Yeah, here's Yaakov. I can see Yaakov here. We're still a minute. Too soon. Thursday. 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 About a month ago, I suggested that Frank is the rabbi that is capable of how he fix the other seat that we all miss. That's what they did. <laughs> what was that, Yaakov? I didn't say anything, but I'm just uh, listening. I'm on mute since uh, I'm in a car. I'll be okay. home. Sh I'll be home shortly, Buzz Shum. I think we left out on uh, left off on two sixty eight. Exactly. Right. We did the yeah. We we did Rav Lior and Rav Yaakov Ariel. Yeah. Did, oh right. Yeah, that's where I have the marker too. Right. That's where I thought we left off. Let's just wait another minute. See who else signs on. Saul is here. Ernie, when do you finish saying Kaddish? Thursday, my last day. Okay, okay. so. We're gonna we're gonna start on the top of two sixty eight. We're still in the sugya of Hilchos Pasababi Kisnin. So, Rav Ariel, who Rav Yaakov Ariel was the chief rabbi of Ramat Gan for many years. I'm just gonna go back to two sixty seven to. Summarize what Rav Yaakov Ariel said. He agrees with the general approach of Rav Lior 
that determining the fact of whether you say a motzi or not is whether the bread is meant to be eaten as the mainstay of a meal or as a snack. Accordingly, he writes that so long as loaves are baked to serve as bread, even if they are made primarily with fruit juice or the like, such that the taste of the roll is significantly different than that of a standard roll, even the Ramo would agree that the bracha should be a motzi. Ravariel summarizes the conclusion in the paragraph below, but he adds that if a person eats only a small roll, the appropriate bracha is mizonos, because a roll of this size does not generalize for, generally formalize a meal. Halach maniyotam and tukot, sweetened bread rolls. Ravariel is referring to rolls that are made with oil and fruit juice such that even the Ramah would in theory rule that one recites the Brach of Mizonus on them. Unless you eat a very small amount. Where a person would not be satiated. Harold, we're on 268. We just started Thank on you. the top. 30 gram. That's pretty small. If it's a 60 gram roll, that's considered like a, a, a suda. The Sefer Vizosa Bracha somewhat similarly rules that the Bracha is determined by the quantity. However, in going beyond the ruling of Rabbi Yael, Ariel, he argues that in consonance with the standards of Pasa Babakistin, the bracha for these rolls remains mezonos, even if a person is eating more than a kazayas, unless he is eating the full amount necessarily to formally establish a meal, meaning kovea suda. According to Rav David Yosef, in the halacha brura, the halacha concerning sweet chala or rolls does not depend upon whether it's conventional today to eat this kind of roll as the basis of a meal, rather, it depends directly upon the machlokas between the shulchanach and ramah. Thus, svardim should not treat these sweet moles rechal as bread, and their brachos mezonos, but askenazim should recite them mostly since they're classified as bread. Chalas and bread that are sweet. Most of the dough is made with water. They add some eggs and sugar. When you eat a, 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 an egg challah for Shabbos, we know it tastes sweet. Unless you eat a, a large enough, uh, we said it was 216 grams. Yes, last week we learned, or two weeks ago we learned that 216 grams, even the Sephardim would make a motzi on it. You should eat them within a meal. The eggs and the, and the sweet stuff is not the main part of the dough. You don't really taste the eggs and the sugar more than the dough. Um, the case of a small roll describer of Ariel differs from the case of eating a small quantity of regular blood. In the latter case, one must recite a mozi when eating the smallest quantity of bread. By contrast, in the former case of a small roll, since the roll is defined as pasta bobby kissing due to the fruit juice, one would still recite a mazonas on it if you eat a quantity not large enough to be, to be assigned or defined as Kaviya Suda. 
Thus, Rav David Yosef rules, back to 269, that so long as the rules fit the criteria spelled out in the Shulchan Aruch, Sephardim should treat rules of this type as possible by Kisnin and not as bread. His argument is that although these are eaten in the context of the meal, so long as one has not actually fixed the meal upon them, the bracha remains with own. In some communities, especially in the U.S., commercial bakeries sell rolls kneaded with fruit juice instead of water, marketing them as mizonos rolls. The product is meant to be a practical bread-type sandwich roll, but one which does not involve the perceived complications of washing it to daim and reciting birch samos. However, as opposed to some of the sweet rolls discussed above, these rolls have no distinct sweet flavoring. Their taste is nearly identical to that of normal rolls. What is their status with respect, with respect to Pasa Babi Kistin? In order to understand the different opinions about Mazonas rolls, it is worthwhile to first note that the Achronim disagree as to how to interpret the Ramo's opinion concerning the amount of flavoring and additions to the dough that transforms it from bread into Pasa Babi Kistin. According to the Shulchan Aruch, the Ramah holds that the key criteria is the majority of the composition of the liquid and other elements of the dough other than the flour. If the majority of the liquid used in the dough consists of fruit juice, sugar, honey, eggs, or the like, and the amount of water is in the minority, then the food is classified as Pasa Babakist. Dough that's kneaded with honey or milk or butter or fat or oil or eggs or fruit cheese or wine or bishar mash puts me mayim. Vafilu iriv bamat mayim. Imarovu mishar mashkin. If the majority of the of the liquid that you're adding to the flour is not water, on the other hand, many so according to this opinion, a sweet roll that consists of concentrated fruit juice or the like whose taste is distinctly discernible, but does not constitute the majority of the liquid in the dough, it would still warrant reciting amotzi. This is an important consideration, even for those poskim who allow reciting mizoros on sweet rolls based on the shokhan ochara, since some of them are made with food concentrate. On the other hand, many achron, including the Taz Mishnabur, imply that the notion of the primary component is not determined in this case by the majority, but rather by the potency of the flavoring. If the flavoring is so strong that it changes the essence of the food and becomes the ikar, the primary component, then the food is transformed into pasa babikist. Says the Mishnah Bura. Ritzon Loma Shekolkach if you have so many spices, if you taste the spice more than the dough, same thing with honey, shemen, oil, cholov, we need the majority of those volumes to be them and not water. That way you're going to be able to tell the taste of those additives. They become the primary flavor. And the, the, and the dough is tofil. When the Shukhanov talked about filling, the filling has to be so much. 
So according to Shulchan Harab, one could argue that one indeed recites mazonas on them, since the majority of the composition of the liquid in the dough comes from fruit juice. On the other hand, according to Mishnah Bura, we should follow the character of the primary flavor of the dough. So if the roll tastes like bread, one should recite a mozi on it. We're talking about those rolls that commercial bakeries make with fruit juice, but it tastes like a regular roll. So based on this Shulchan Aruch Arav, you could make a mazonos. Based on this sheet of the Mishnah Bura, that if it's the taste of bread, you'd still have to make a mozi. Some posts can follow the Shulchan Aruch Arav and endorse reciting mazonos on these rolls. But many American poskim rule that one should still recite a mozi. Some have issued strong opposition in the past to this labeling, arguing that the rolls cannot be considered anything other than proper bread, even if consumed in small quantities. See the end of the main section of the Sefer Vizosa Bracha, which cites a proclamation by prominent American poskim that one should recite Hamotzi on Mizonos rolls. Among the signatories were Rav Moshe Heinemann, Rav Avram Blumenkrantz, and Rav Yisrael Belsky. This is presumably based upon the Mishnah Bura, who holds that one follows the flavoring of the dough rather than what's in the majority. In addition, they are used functionally as a substitute for bread. So perhaps even Sephardim should recite a mozi on them. It's also the position of the OU. It, uh, the footnote gives you the expanded uh, uh, website if you want to go see this into detail. It says, I have seen sandwiches and rolls labeled mizonos rolls. Is the brach on these rolls read the mizonos? So as noted in the previous halacha yomis, the Shulchan Aruch rules that the bracha on baked dough made with honey, oil, milk, or spices is gorim eminazot. How much spice or flavor must be added to the dough to render the bracha mezonos? The Shulchan Aruch rules that a discernible taste is sufficient. And this position is followed by Sephardi Jewry. In contrast, there are more rules that the flavor must be predominant. And this ruling is followed by Ashkenazic Zuri. The OU post scheme, as well as many others, understand the Ramot to mean that the brachas mizonos only if the final product tastes like cake and not like bread. That's why you're supposed to make a mozi on them and not mizonos. Susie was commenting, well, the rules they give you on the airplane that they say to make mazonas on tastes like bread. Well, that's exactly what they're talking about here. They're saying for Ashkenazim, we really should make hamotzi on those rolls. Now, mazonos rolls, quote unquote, are generally needed with fruit juice and water. Typically, they taste almost exactly like regular rolls. Rav Belsky and Rav Schechter both held that they are without question hamotzi for Ashkenazim. And even for Sephardim, the bracha may be a mozi, since the fruit juice is often you can't taste it. So basically, we're learning this concept of Pasav Abikistin for us Ashkenazim is unless when you eat it, it doesn't taste like bread, you have to make a mozi on it, even though they call it a mizonos roll. Mainly because we go after what it, what it tastes like. And if you really can't, it, it's got to be the predominant flavored where you flavor the sugar or the cinnamon, like a cinnamon roll would not be bread. That's Mizonos, because the dominant flavor is not bread, it's sweet. But if you ate a cinnamon roll, you understand that's that's also baked with dough, so that would be Mizonos. But if you try to make a roll and use fruit juice, but it comes out tasting like bread, and you don't taste the fruit juice, you have to make a mozi on it. So you're a tea and air then. The machloket concerning the various type of mizonos rolls and sweet rolls appears to revolve at least partially around whether the standards for defining kviyat suda depend upon the termination of the time of chazal or upon the customary practice in current times. Those that maintain that one may recite mizonos on sweet rolls and the like 
believe that the halacha is dependent upon the standards for Kriya Suda used by Chazal. This approach is explained by Rav Arye Pomeranchik in Amek Bracha, who writes that even if sweetened bread rolls are used in the formal function of more traditional bread, their halachic status of Pasa Babikistan does not change. That means what, whether something is Kaveh Sud or not, it's based on the way Chazal did it, not on what happens today. According to the Emek Bracha, the status of Pasa Babikistan was not a function of how a particular food was eaten. Rather, the fact that such breads were eaten in passing was a reflection or a marker of their fundamentally different nature. Thus, even if such foods serve more as staples today, their fundamental identity still remains. Those who hold that one, one must wash and recite a mozi on sweet rolls argue that the definition of pasapal bikistin has always depended on the food item's role. Thus, if one of the foods in question comes to be predominantly used as the staple of a meal, as it is today, its status changes to that of bread. And such argument was made by Rav Yaakov of Lissa, the Nesiva Samishpat, in a Zagodos Masanisim. Kivan Shirashi Kosovatam of Pasababi Kistin. They know Chlimen Rakt over Muad. Rashi explains the Pasababi is something that you just nash on. Lefizia called Tolim, the Raos Ene Amoire. How does the Halachic authority view it? The culture of Pasababi Kistin, Shane Mid Echa Oil, like Wallaf Suda. If people are going to nash this, they're not going to be Kaveh Suda on it. Lefiros Ene of Yeshlo Dan, the Yeshlo Din Pasababi Kistin. Thus, in the view of Rav Yaakov of Lisa, Contemporary eating convention is a formative criteria in determining the qualification of Pasa Babikistan. Although, as we have seen, this issue is subject to a machlokas, according to Shlomo Zaman Auerbach, as quoted in Vizosa Bracha, the dominant practice is to rely on the position of Rav Yaakov of Lissa, which correlates with the opinion of Rav Ariel, Rav Lior, and the OU, and this is cited in the name of Chazonish as well, that if sweetened bread rolls do do sweetened bread rolls or mizonos rolls have the status of Babi Kistin, so according to Rav Shlomo Zaman, you make a mizonos on it unless someone eats the substantial full quantity of Kriya Suda, which we said 216 grams. But that's the corner of Shlom Zaman. According to the Allah Chabrura, the Ashkenazim should recite a motzi on that. And you can see on page 272, a summary. Page 273. We have already alluded to the fact that one of the features of Apasa Babikistin is that one recites Hamotzi upon it in cases of Kviya Suda, which means you're eating it to fix the meal. While it is assumed that Apasa Babikistin is typically eaten in moderate quantities, if a person eats Apasa Babikistin as the mainstay of a meal, then it must be treated as any other bread, both with respect to Hamotzi as well as Birch HaSamozim. Look in the footnote. With respect to Natil Siadayu, the Beis Yosef writes explicitly that there is no Natil Siadayim for Pasa Babikistin, even if one is going to eat it in the role and quantity of a meal. The Shukhrach himself ignores the issue entirely in Simon 168, but he does imply that one performs Natil Siadayim if he makes a meal of Pasa Babikistin. And this is the ruling of the Mishnabura. The commentary struggle as to why Rav Yosef Karo, who wrote it in the Beis Yosef, did not codify it in the Shulchan Aruch. Back to the English. In this section, we will study sources that address several aspects of the halachic definition of Kriya Suda. We're going to begin with the Shulchan Aruch who writes that Kriya Suda does not depend on an individual being fully satiated, 
but rather upon the amount that would satiate most people. If he ate an amount of bread that most people would be covered on, even he was not personally satisfied, how much food is considered this measure? As discussed in the Mishnah Bura, this question is debated by the Akroni. Some hold the measurement is three or four times kibetzah, while others hold that it depends on the amount that one eats as the mainstay of a meal, which in least in earlier times exceeded that of three or four beets. If you live in an apartment building and you live in an apartment and there's a common area, so Me'ikar Adin both are considered Rishus Ayochis, but you're not allowed to carry from your apartment into the general area unless you've made an Eruv Tchumen. Well, actually, unless you make an Eruv Chatseros. Actually, unless you make an Eruv, here we're talking about Tchumen. Here we're talking about making an Eruv to allow you to walk beyond 2,000 Amis. Now, you can't go more than 2,000 Amis beyond your city. But if you put a meal 2,000 Amis away, you can, you, it's basically you set up a, a, a Suda for yourself and you, you set your place. You can go another 2,000 Amis from there. Let's see the footnote. Tchum refers to the provision of not traveling more than 2,000 Amis beyond the limits of the city in which one is located on Shabbat. However, in special circumstances, such as for the sake of a mitzvah, your Rebbe is coming, one may place sufficient for two meals, referred to as the Erev Tchumen, within 2,000 Amis of the city limits before Shabbat. One thereby establishes that place as his residence. And consequently, he is permitted to walk within 2,000 cubit radius of that place. It should be noted, although the Mishnah Bura makes reference to Erev Tchumen, the simon he cites as the source for the measurement of three or four eggs worth, Simon 368, actually refers to Erev Chatseros which serves to transform open spaces into private domain, which allows people to carry on Shabbos like we have. That's an Eir of Tchumen. That's an Eir of Chatseros. And you have to set uh, food for two meals in a designated area to, to in order to be able to carry there. So, back to the Mishnah. The Simen Shin Sameches, Isa, the Shir Suda who gimel Dal Beitzi. The volume of a Suda is going to be three or four eggs worth. The Kosu Kama, the Kosu Kama Achronim, and other Achronim wrote, Uwa Din Khan, Kosu Bezashir Kviya Suda. Some achronim have equated the volume of Kriya Suda to that. The, the, the Vilna Gon was included in that group. You should not make a mozi. The standard, which is more than four measures of a kibetza. If you're going to not recite a mozi, you must eat less than at least four kibetza. Rav Moshe Feinstein mentions that the definition of Kviya Suda may depend on eating habits in a particular place and according to one's age. Nonetheless, as a universal standard, he argues that a person ideally 
should adhere to the standard of four kibbeitz, as mentioned by the Mishnah Bura, if and, and to make a motzi on that, even if you're eating a pasa babikista, because you're being koveya suda. Uvidvar shir likviya suda levar chamotzi berchas amazon al pasa babikista. You're going to eat these sweetened rolls. Even if you're going to eat cinnamon, cinnamon rolls, but you're going to eat a huge volume of it. If it's going to be more than four kibetza, according to Rav Moshe and according to these poiskim, you're going to have to make a motzi. Vare ro. The Mishra Bura, Simon Kuf Samaches, if cotton, she is soivim, the who came only in an eru. Shugimel Batesim the Suda. Lia Shimon who dalit Batesim. Some say three, some say four. But Kama Khwanim Vagroa Cholki. Dukashir Sudak Vuber Vavoke, which is four. Ella la gro di ime, who Ashir Kahilas Odum Bain and Nibuchom Medidom Dil Shoim. Sort of a, a, a middle average man, depending on what country he's in, what he's going to eat. Shiesh medino chokli ma'at, vie chokli ma'at, it depends where you are. Some eat little, some eat a lot. The gambiskanim, older people, kfimidas achila zokain, uvena arim, bene yud gimel yadal, 13 and 14 years eat a lot more. Ulachat chili yesh lachmer, kashir dal baits. So, if you're going to eat dal baitsim, you certainly should make a motzi. The time of the Lord Machber Kashir Gimel Beitzim, who mekaven the Yosher Noite Kedasa Grodime, he was leaning more towards the Gro. Lachain Avshem and Aroy Lachem and Lachatchila, Gam Kasoyvim Du Kashir Kasuda De Iru, means maybe you should be Machber all the way down to three. Sagi Lachber Rakasarvim Dal Beitzim. He says you don't have to be Machber more than four. So you got to eat if you to, to make. So let's say you're going to eat a roll, but less that's sweetened, that's clearly pasababikistin. If you eat eight less than four kabatsim, you would not have to make a motzi. Which we said was 216 grams. That was on page 266. The Yakut Yosef. In addition to assessing a range of opinions and summarizing their conclusions, the contemporary work Vizosa Bracha also converts the various opinions into modern measurements. And he gives us a nice summary. Nechlekua Poiskim. Ma'i akamus, what is the volume? Hanechshevis l'shir kviya suda, hamachay ben levarich al pasa babikis and hamotzi. That would require that even if you're going to eat a roll made with fruit juice or eggs or something like that, that you'd have to make hamotzi on. Imach lo levado, if you ate it alone. Ishnam poiskim, asorvim shashir kviya suda u kamos kvul la arba beitzim. You need to eat at least four baits, which is the volume of 200 grams. Well, 200 grams of water, which he says is equivalent to 230 grams of cake. Remember, 454 grams is one pound. So 230 grams is a half a pound. Do we eat a half a pound of bread? Friday night? Huh? Some people. Some people. Half a pound? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Could be. Well, well, like, but it's, it's a problem. It, How many ounces? But remember, so we, we I want to remind everyone, if you eat water challah, which doesn't have any flavor of anything, so that you no matter how much you eat, you have to make you have to make a mozi. We learn that. It's not it's because but if you ate egg challah. Which has a very strong taste, which mm -hmm. is very sweet. So there you would be you you probably you'd have to eat that amount in order for you to be 
to fulfill your hamotzi and make a benching. How how would this apply to matzah? I'm just curious. How many? Well, matzah slices? is bread because it's only made oh, so, with flour and water. Oh, so there's no flavor. Oh, so no flavors. So no anything flavoring, you eat. So that's bread. You, okay, but so egg matzah. If you eat a lot of egg matzah, do you make a motzi? Yeah, but who eats based that? Based on this, yeah. yeah. But who okay. eats? I'm paying. For that, if, and, and what do you do with pretzel challah? That's a problem too. So if it has so strong okay. taste. Yeah. Is that made? Is, is, yeah, but is I, that an I, egg? I don't know what pretzel challah is made out of. Out of. What's it? Somebody it says it's baking soda. Yeah, but if it has a flavor it's and it's, it's dark. An it's an additive. Yeah. Okay. Let's go further with the Vizosa Bracha. Shakamus Zu Anima Yurigim like Bosuzos of Mizmana Gamora. So poor people in the time of Chazal, this would be their meal. Four baits him of bread. They didn't need anything else. The Asha Sovim Shashir Kvi Suda Hiya Kamush Rov the other Mizmanaze. That it's not a certain volume. It's whatever amount of bread a person is going to eat with his suda. So that's like us who take a piece of bread maybe Friday night and eat it with your soup or something like that. You're, that's called eating, you know, that, that fulfills the second version. You know, that the, the amount of bread that you establish your meal on. You, you eat your meal around bread. According to the second opinion, it isn't a set volume. It's this is different based on which country you're in. Are you old? Are you young? There's some countries where People will be filled by just a little bit. They'll, they'll have to eat a large quantity. And women eat less. Each person has to calculate from, for themselves what satiates them. Sick people or shomim risko, people that are watching their weight. You know, they're not eating because they have health reasons. And that you can't rely on that as a measure. One second. One second. One second. I just have a page. One second. This is Dr. Agatstein. Here comes the, the punchline. The Ashkenazic poskim follow the second opinion. What determines the Kviya Suda for us is what regular people in our time get filled up on. But it's good to be stringent. And therefore, if you're gonna get, if you're just gonna say mezonos, bracha, you should be careful not to eat more than four beitzim. If if that's the only thing you're gonna eat. Otherwise, you're going to be a, a suffix that you might have needed to make a different brach. And according to his assessment, 
Ad commercial 230 gram Uga, the average person does not fix a meal upon a quantity less than 230 grams of cake. Ain Regilam Bainani, and therefore Mavark Mazonos. Uva 280 gram Uga, who sheer Vada Shakov Many posts came whole that one fixes his meals on Mizonos rolls when eating a much smaller amount. And one would therefore recite a mozi when eating a smaller amount. On the basis of this second approach, according to which the standard for fixing a meal is individual, it is logical that the amount can also vary depending on the type of food being eaten. Thus, one who eats a Mizonos roll in place of bread would recite a mozi even if less than 230 grams of it are consumed. That's very important. Let, let's say you're having a sandwich, you know, like a bologna sandwich. Well, the whole point is bread and meat. So even if you were going to eat less than the 230 grams, you would make a mozi on it because you, you want it as bread. That's basically what he's saying here. So according to Zosa Bracha, Ashkenazi Poskim accept the second approach. Thus, the amount of a meal is determined subjectively for each group of people, and eating up to 230 grams of cake is not defined as a meal for most people. However, according to the dominant Sephardic position, Kviyasuda is determined by a fixed universal standard. So according to Yalkut Yosef, 260 grams or more of Pasa Baba Kisin, you'll, you'll end up making a motzion, no matter what. Right? In Kova Sudos Aleyam, Ainu shachal two hundred sixteen grams v'yotir no tel yada v'varch l'mamotzi uberch zamozav v'im hischi lechla lechla uga. If you started eating the cake shalom al daslik you were you were just going to snack, and you didn't think that this was going to your meal. Uberch bir berch minas mezonos, and you made a mezonos v'nim shach, but you started eating more. At shachal sheared two hundred sixteen gram v'varch berch zamozon av shabirch betchila bor minem mezonos. Okay. So let's say a person started eating. He thought he was just going to eat a little bit of cake, but he liked the cake and he ate more and more and more and he ate 240 grams, the Svardim. So you started with Boyam and Amazonos, but you would make a a, a, a a benching on that according yeah. to that. Half a, pound, half a pound of cake is a huge, it's like it's a, a, a major amount of cake. Not in Muncie. <laughs> 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 okay. Or borrow part. <laughs> well, five hundred four hundred and fifty-four grams is one pound. Right. So, 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 so it's a half a pound. That's what it is. That's a lot of cake. Okay. Accordingly, a person should be careful at weddings, kiddish, and other celebrations, not to eat too much of those foods. That qualify as pasa babikisnin, like a Danish, right? A cinnamon roll, whatever they have there. As long as you just nash it and you're not eating a, a large volume of it, you're not going to have a problem with this problem of, of Boyman and Amazonas. And should you bench, whatever. Those sports Danishes look like they're like half a pound. <laughs> no? Sydney says, Susie says the Schwartz Danishes look like they're half a pound. <laughs> okay. However, as he often does in the Orach HaShulchan, Rav Yechiel Mechel Epstein presents an argument in defense of those who heedlessly eat large quantities of Pasa Babakistan. Vida. Shekam HaGdolim Tzaku Kruchi Almashen Yispashes Bidoreinu. There used to be Gdolei Aposkim that would scream at people are the minig that spread in our generation. The Cholam Adina Shabbat Eid Eze Simcha Orchim Shulchanim Kamimine Dogim that when they have a Simcha they make a table with fish. I'm sure he was talking about herring. The Orach HaShulchan was a, a Litvak. They had, they had good herring in Lithuania. You know, it's, it's the Baltic Sea there. The Kamimine Bosser. Maybe they had cold cuts. But the breads were not real bread. Right? They didn't wash. 
They didn't bench. And the birchas mezoynes. Ul v'soif al amichya. V'ochlim harbe me'od. They eat a lot maglus kaos. These are big pieces of cake. Or challah afui al shemen. Challah baked in oil. Which they he qualified as pasababi kisten because it wasn't with water. Vein shum savik bezeh. It's no question because of the volume that they're eating that they'd have to make a mozi. But we can't really protest. He's going to find a svara to protect those that have that meaning to eat without a mozi. Nira Lali Lanias died in my humble opinion, Kula, Miloshan Arif, Binyan said. Chikosu Vizeloshan, Maskona, Hecha de Ochala, the Torah's Kisnin. If a person started eating these breads, Mavarech, Borim Nemezonos, Vehechal de Ochala, the Torah's Kviusa, if you're just going to sort of nash on it, clearly you make a Mizonos. If you're going to be kaveh suda mavarchal amotzi, and then bench ad kam l'shamo, umashem l'shono, the ain't a tolu b'shir kaveh sasuda, ella be'ofen achila. It's not how, it's not what the shear is, it's how you eat it. Ve'na achana l'achila saroid ve'na achana l'achila kavot. The orchashulcha knew people were in shul. They're standing around. They're gnashing it. That's not the manner in which is that there's a casual eating and then there's formal dining. People take off their clothes, their jackets. And you sit around a table. Here at Kiddush and Shul or at a Simcha, they grab there's no, they eat while they walk. Now you can tell that the Aruch HaShulchan, Yaakov, you can tell the Aruch HaShulchan was a shul rav. <laughs> Unlike the uh, Mishnah Brura, uh, the Mishnah Burr, of course, he wasn't a shul rav. The Aruch Hashulchan writes like a shul rav. He saw what went on in the Kiddush uh, every Shabbos, and he he lived in the trenches. He and he saw what really happens at these Kiddushim, and he was uh, he was taking due regard for the people because of it. <laughs> Absolutely. According to the Aruch Hashulchan, one who eats large quantities of pasah kitzim without sitting down, in the manner that one normally eats a meal. May not be required to wash recite emotes in Birch Zamosu. Yeah, Ernie. Yes, sir. In today's day and age, when people go out to a restaurant or they have a dinner at home, no one eats any baked goods. There's no bread, nothing, because they want to avoid the carbs. So they can have a full meal, a huge salad, chicken fit, and never not have eaten anything baked. Absolutely. You don't make emotes? Yeah. yeah. So at the end, do you bench? What do you what do you do at the end? Oh. You say born the far shows, depending on what you eat. Depends on what you ate. If you ate yeah. Mizonos. Right, right, right. If, if you ate Mizonos, pasta, you might have to make an alamechia. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's but, that's more common when I see it uh, at Hassan is no one no one washes, no one eats the bread. They go straight to the meal and that's it. So that's yeah. that in a Yeah. Absolutely. Corn tortilla, Susie said, no, they're for what? You don't make a mozi on that. Okay. Okay. Kviya Suda. Now, I have to qualify. What we've been talking about, really, is you're only eating that this bread thing. You're not eating it with other foods. You're, you're sitting down eating a piece of cake. Or a cinnamon roll. You're not eating it along with other foods. So these shiurim is based on eating just that alone. 
So, and that's what he said. Thus mm-hmm. far, we have explored the question of what quantity of pasababikisnin. Before we do that, let's see, let's read the footnote 24. One would have to eat a large amount of pasta bobby kissing, such as cake or cookies to ex- Okay, nevertheless, I'm back back to the according to the Archa Shulchan, one who eats large quantities of pasta bobby without sitting down in the manner that one normally eats a meal may not be required to wash. Nevertheless, even the Archa Shulchan recommends avoiding such practices. Consequently, one who attends a large kiddish or other similar events should be careful to eat less than 230 grams of Pasababa Kisnin. Assuming one does not transform his, his, transform his eating into a formal meal. I know people at, at Yavna who actually don't go home and eat lunch. They'll, they'll, there's, they will sit down and they'll be have the Suda there. Sometimes they'll wash. They have collar rolls there. Okay? One would have to eat a large amount of pasta baba kisses, such as cake or cookies to exceed 230 grams. According to those opinions brought in the next section, that other foods eaten together with the pasta baba kisses are also included, then it's not as difficult or infrequent to consume 230 grams of pasta baba kisses together with other foods of the Kiddush, which would seemingly require one to recite a Motsi and Birchas So, gentlemen, what we're going to now get into is you're not just eating a piece of Danish, but you're going to have sushi and cold cuts and melon and all those other things. If they all add up to 230 grams and sort of the icker part of your thing was the baked good you ate, you'd have to make a Motsi. And you'd have to bench, even at a kiddush. We have to add in that uh, the cholan, and the cholan, <laughs> meaning if you're only going to eat the cake, fine, two hundred thirty grams is going to be a problem. But with all of what what we just said, it might be a problem, right? We have explored the question of what quantity of pasta babi kisten passes from casual snacking to a lachik meal. However, people today often eat pasta babi kisten alongside other foods. Accordingly, it is necessary to determine if these other foods contribute to the sum quantity of eating that may transform pasa baba kisin into a proper bread. According to Magan Avram, this is the case. If a person has a moderate quantity of pasa baba kisin, but enough of additional food to satiate, that's called kviya suda. Says the Magan Avram, right? The, the main commentary on the Shulchan Aruch Or Chayim, nearly. If he fixated his meal on the baked good, even though he's going to eat other things, meat, and if he ate the bread itself or the cake itself, he would not have been satiated. He has to make a motzi and bench. Mashma mm. Like Hamon Tashin and eat other things. Because the Hamon Tashin were probably Pasababi Kisnin, but they ate other foods together. And if the Hamon Tashin was, the, was the, the main baked good, you have to make a mozi. So, a number of Achronim, including the Chida, Rabbi Chaim Yosef David Azulai, in his commentary, Birka Yosef, had a problem with the Mogan Avram. Harav Mogan Avram, he cites Sif, Cotton Yud Gimel, Vamai, and Yire. He doesn't, he doesn't feel that the proofs that he brought from the Gemara and the Toysus were good. That they asked the Kasha on him, the Kaimelon, Perekotchem is Bech, the Shnei Dvarm, the Loshovu Bishurim, and Mistarfin. 
Bread is one thing. Meat is another thing. They, they don't have the same measurements. You can't even star it. Meat doesn't have a measurement. It has a measurement, but not for Kviya Suta. Mm. He says, me, the simpleton. He leaves it as a he, he doesn't think that you'd have to do it. The Birke Yosef. The logic, look in the footnote 25. The logic of the Mogan Avram might be explained on the basis of the conceptual approach suggested by the Rakh HaShulchan, who posits that Kviya Suda is not a function of the quantity of food, but the manner in which the food is eaten. Accordingly, if a person eats a moderate quantity of Pazah Babakistan, alongside a substantial amount of other food, the Mogan Avram might argue that this pasta is the basis of a kind of a meal. So the Birke Yosef raised a sound objection. If meat and the like belong to a different category of food and play no role in ever requiring brick and samosa on their own, like what Harold said, salad, meat, you don't have to bench on that. I don't care how much you eat. Then how could they contribute to the measure of Pasabah Gisden subject to Birch Samosa? It means they're questioning why the Mogan Avram said that there should be hit star force, that you can add the grams of bread and the grams of the other stuff, like never the, you know, this is this and this is this and never the twain shall meet. So the Mishnabura, based on the Skida, suggests a modified understanding of the Magad Avram's argument where he says, Vim Ochlo, if you ate the Pasa Babikistin in Basar or Dvar Machayr, now, this is a new concept. You take bread and you dip it in hummus. You dip it in chicken soup or things that come that were malafes the pas, things that you kutach. eat bread with. Kutach, exactly. He's a good dafyoimi guy. Sagi kishoichel shir shachem regim lisbon menu kishochen gam ken in vormacherin. So if he eats with if he eats the pas with meat or other items that normally go along with bread, then if he eats an amount that people are typically satisfied, then you're gonna have to make a motzi. And the Mishnah Burr's line of reasoning is fully elaborated by the Piske Chuvas, who explains that only foods that are eaten directly with bread are combined with the pas. So, for example, you have a corned beef sandwich. Mm -hmm. So there you'd have to measure if you have a quarter pound of corned beef. I don't know how much you get on a sandwich. Saul says it depends what restaurant you go to. So there, <laughs> hamburger, half a half a pound, half a, remember? What were they, a quarter pounder? Half a pounder? So there. The half a pounder you'll have to bench on. You, because the, even though the amount of bread you're eating might be less, now again, that bread may not be a pasta babi kisnin. If that bread is real bread, bread, that bread is real bread, you'd have to make a mozi, no matter what the shiur is. Now, od kosfu, b'shmir shabbos kil kosfu, b'shem agon roshlom is amon arba. The afa mogen avron udi ime, who went along with him, he never meant that all foods are mitzvah. He also agreed. He was talking with foods that go along with the bread you're eating. If you go on lachmaniot mezonot, mezonos bread, oh, crackerim, musugem shaochlum behem dogi maluchim. They knew that people ate a herring on a cracker. Or memarachim, memarachim are spreads, shonim, like hummus, uprusos yurakos, or they would put certain vegetables on a cracker, the salatim, the tavshile beitzim, or like devil's eggs. So those are things that go along with the mizonos. But do you eat the cracker with a watermelon? No. Watermelon is a dessert. 
you know, it's not eaten with the bread, but deviled egg is eaten with the bread. That that's what they're trying to say. So that would be mitzvahs. But other foods that you don't eat a cracker with trulant, do you? You don't eat bread with trulant. Even though they come to satiate you, that's like somebody who got filled up with fruit. So that. And he gives a footnote. Things that go along with the bread. The Magnavrarim, Lomo Theoloshenze. The Magnavrarim never said Melafi. Kunir Diver Mishabur Koy Gama Mashakos of Ochlu in Bosso. The Kavanosukum of Washadavka Shorkla Bosso, Shardvarma Melafim Yachad, Imzonus Mamish. He meant you eat it with meat when you eat it directly with meat. However, unlike the aforementioned Ashkenazi poskim, Sephardi poskim insist that kviat soda is determined by measure of pasak alone and without being mitzvah of the other stuff. He says hakovir sudos la pasak babikistin and bitzir fabasu you add meat achal shir iron based dram. A dram is a measure of weight that is used in some locales. It's measured in halachic literature and other contexts, including Pinya Ben in this context. A dram is when you go to London or England or Scotland, they give you a dram of with some. So 72 dram is the measure of four kibetza, as explained by the Ben Ishchai. So it's if you don't eat, uh, like we said, 230 grams. Of the Pasa Babikistin, Lochashiv Kuvestu, Pasa Babikistin, Sheen Litzarf Lashir Zemach. He doesn't, he, it's only the Ashkenazim that talk about the hit starfits with other foods. Okay, I'm going to stop. You see, this is a very relevant, very complicated sugya. And we're going to continue, God willing, next week and maybe the following week because we have a lot more to go with this issue. Any other? Comments, questions, uh, ROs. I guess if you, yes. if you want to do further Eon, it's a mystery as to where you should go. It <laughs> says C, but it doesn't say where. What page are you, Yaakov? Uh, 280. Look at further Eon. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I've I've written uh, to them when I saw these kind of mistakes. Sure. I never got an answer. Sure, I never you got sure. an answer. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm going to send... An email to Doron Podlashek that he has to uh, send it to Doron. It's a good yeah. idea. It's very it's important. Good. That's the whole purpose. You, since we're going through it, if we find yeah. mistakes, they should correct the next versions. But you could look into further even on page two eighty nine. Page two eighty nine. It it might be worthwhile. We might learn it together. We'll see. Okay. Any other comments? No. So. Next week, same time, same station, Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. Be well, everyone. Go ahead.